Um, I'm Cassie Mira, thanks for being here. Thank you especially to the Office of Community Partnerships for making this work possible. Um, thanks also to Carly and Julia who provided so much support um, from the proposal stage into the execution of this project. I am really happy to introduce Mike Hefflinger, who's the Executive Director of Write 253, which is Hi, <laughs> which is a um, literary arts nonprofit in Tacoma. Um, I also want to recognize that this proposal was initially put forward with Jimmy McCarty, who was our former executive director of the Center for Equity and Inclusion. He's now at Boston, so we lost him. Um, and then also Omari Amili, who can't be with us today. He also served as a consultant on this project. Um, Omari is currently a lecturer in the School of Social Work and Criminal Justice. He's also um, a really lauded author and speaker and advocate for um, <clears throat> formerly incarcerated and justice-involved youth. So he was also um, a contributor to this work. I'll start just by providing a little bit of context. So um, our collaboration is much smaller in scale, uh, but I am really proud of the work that we accomplished. Um, I started as a volunteer at the Raymond Hall uh, Book and Writing Club, which Write 253 has run for a number of years. And this was back in, I think it was spring of 2018. <clears throat> and so this is you know, pre-pandemic where all of the programming was in person. Um, Raymond Hall is the juvenile detention center in Tacoma, so it's right across from Tacoma Boys. If you drive past there, you might have noticed it. Um, it's actually quite large, so it used to be full. Um, and I think Pierce County Courts has done a lot in the last decade to bring youth incarceration rates down. Um, nevertheless, you know, we do still have a lot of youth who are there. <clears throat> So the book club and the writing club were non-academic. These are like um, opt-in programs for youth to develop writing skills, um, to do a lot of creative writing, and then just to read with the resources at the on-site library at Raymond Hall. And so I volunteered there for a number of years. Um, you know, I hope that I made a positive impact. I think more so I learned a lot about <coughs> the city of Tacoma. I learned a lot about youth in the city of Tacoma, and I thought of this just as a very, very valuable um, experience. I also got to know uh, Mary Fox, who was the founder of Write 253, and then um, Mike, who's now ED. Um, a few years after this, I invited Mike to kind of collaborate on a unit in a course that I teach for writing studies that's called TWRITE 388, Writing for Social Change. And the reason why I thought this particular collaboration would be productive for students is because this is a class that had recently um, gotten the community engaged learning designation. And so really the, the um, objective was to partner in some way with a community partner. Um, this is a partnership that I already had, but also we had dedicated units on mass incarceration. So students were already reading um, and kind of rhetorically analyzing works by Michelle Alexander and Reginald Dwayne Betts, so um, poetry by somebody who is formerly incarcerated. And in this class, students produced um, some written materials for use by volunteers at Raymond Hall. And then they also read you know, writing produced by youth at Raymond Hall and actually provided written response. And I saw in um, conversation with students and also in student evaluations how much they really valued that work, how much they really got um, out of having their work kind of utilized and read by and shared with um, a community partner. <clears throat> so when this opportunity came up, you know, Mike and I had discussed where, like what else we might do with this work rather than um, just having this one-time kind of unit-based collaboration in a class. And um, we developed a number of different kinds of objectives and I think, I think it's the seed for additional work going forward. Um, so one thing that we knew that we wanted to do was to establish some kind of relationship outside of the detention center with Pierce County Courts. Um, I was very interested in building out internship opportunities, especially paid internship opportunities for either writing studies students or students who had um, some other interest in this work. That happened to dovetail really nicely with some curriculum development work that we're doing in writing studies focused on um, social justice and social change. Um, and we sort of had this timeline in place to 
um, have two interns on site at the letterpress, which is a new site for Write 253. Um, they would learn letterpress, they would contribute to ongoing programming, and then they would help us to really outline and define and plan for a diversion and or probation um, program. So essentially working in a similar way as the programming at Raymond Hall with justice involved youth, but outside of the detention center, right? So. Um, this is kind of like a, a step prior to, to you know, where we are at Raymond Hall. Um, we had the long-term goal of just, like basically just outlining this program, but we were fortunate, I think, to also be able to pilot it in the summer. So we worked, um, Mike worked with just one youth, but in that sense, we're a little bit ahead of the game. And then with the two interns who worked with us, I think that their internship experience was very meaningful. And I think that the work that they did over the summer, last summer, um, supported their long-term trajectories in ways that I hadn't really foreseen. So that was very um, cool to see. <coughs> I'll let Mike talk to you um, a little bit more about like why Right 253 is interested in this work and also a little bit about the organization. Do I need to use a microphone? You should, yeah. I should, okay. Um, can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, thanks for having me here. I'm the executive director for Right 253. That's a photograph of our letterpress studio, Line Break Press, which is located across the street from this building next to where the Swiss used to be. So if you go out the back entrance of this building, you're going to see onto Jefferson, you're gonna see a bunch of prints hanging in a window. That's us. Um, you may have seen it already. But um, yeah, so the rationale for the program is, as like Cassie said, we've been doing the Raymond Hall Book Club since 2000, and I've been volunteering with Raymond Hall Book Club since 2014, 15 and we started the Raymond Hall Writing Club in 2016. And the original founders of the writing club, or the book club rather, retired and moved to Arizona and asked Write 253 to take that program over. So we've been overseeing the book club since 2017. Um, and I've always wanted to work with kids who are in different stages of the court system, like with the question really being how do we, you know, intercede so they don't end up at Raymond Hall? Like where can we put programs in place what, if they get put into like a diversion program or if they get a probation option, can we provide programming for them that, that you know, helps them not get locked up uh, at all? Um, so that's kind of where the conversation started between Cassie and I was how can we um, start a program that does that? A lot of the diversion and probation programs are, are hands-on. So the Tacoma Boat Builders, Alchemy skateboards, second cycle bike shop, it's tactile, it's kinesthetic, you're up, you're moving. Up until we opened the letterpress studio, all of our programs were creative writing focused, and I felt that sitting around a table writing poetry was not necessarily going to bring the kids to the yard. So when we opened the shop, I thought, here's something that we have that is active, it's, um, there are like immediate results, it's fun, it's kind of weird, so, um, it's machinery, it's dirty, uh, there's a lot of tools, and there's a lot of, there's just a lot you can teach. There's a lot of vocabulary, there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of techniques. And so, uh, yeah, that's sort of where this program came from. And when Cassie approached me about the internship, it just sort of made sense, now's the time to sort of explore whether or not there's something there. The long-term vision, um, is to have, you know, so our letterpress shop is open sort of by appointment. We have programs that work with kids from Soda. We have like internships with Soda kids. We have kids at Stewart Middle School, Lincoln High School, um, Willie Stewart Academy that kind of come in when we're open. So we're sort of building our schedule around um, our organization's availability, which is pretty limited. We're a, an organization of four people and only two of us know how to do letterpress, so it's, um, you know, it's hard to be there all the time and do the kind of robust letterpress programming that we want to do, but um, long term, I would love to see a cohort of court-involved youth on, you know, on a constant schedule coming through and doing things with us, so we're working on that now. Um, again, Omari is not able to be here today, but what happened over the summer, which I think was really helpful for us in the brainstorming process, is he came up to the shop and um, he actually does some contracted work with Pierce County Courts um, 
with different probation programs. And so we asked him questions like these. Um, how do you generate interest in the program? You know, youth have a lot of options, um, skills-based options in terms of how they might accrue hours with different community partners. We were thinking, like, we're not as exciting as the skateboard shop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a lot of people we learned don't know what letterpress is and so it really was about um, figuring out how to communicate this to youth how to show how skills are transferable how to show um, you know that if you have an artistic interest if you like to write if you're interested in design that this could be a good um, a good fit for you um, Omari also helped us to think in a forward way about some other just pragmatic logistical concerns like transportation so some of the larger programs in town they have transportation you know built into their programs and we didn't have anything like that so that was a big consideration um, availability of the site um, I mean stigma attached to probation you know programs so we were really I think intentional intentional about saying that this is an apprenticeship program um, and kind of making it something that you could be excited to participate in. Um, and then other things for just working with justice involved youth. Mike and I both have experience with this already, but it's at Raymond Hall, and um, the Juvenile Detention Center is such a different um, kind of environment. It's very, very um, structured, you're monitored constantly, you know, the youth are not there of their own volition, and so um, I think the context for our work were different, and he just kind of helped us to ask questions and to make some connections in the community and just shared, um, you know, work that he's doing. It's also the case that in that T-Rate 388 class, I've taught Omari's work. Um, he wrote a big cover story for the UW magazine that was interviewing formerly incarcerated um, students and faculty. Um, and so I had kind of shared with him that, you know, I actually do use his work as an example of writing for social change. <clears throat> okay, a little bit about our interns. So we had two. Um, Celia has an interest in poetry, so that actually worked out really well with the letterpress. Um, the image that you see up here on the right, that's a poem that she had written for my class that she then set on letterpress. It's like a poster to advocate for the missing and murdered indigenous women's movement. Um, she's Suquamish, and she's a member of the Suquamish tribe. Um, I think over the course of the internship, she began to solidify an interest in poetry and in um, studying literature. Literature. So she was kind of, you know, of two minds of what her trajectory might be. Um, she designed this pamphlet, so this is her work. This is part of the work that she completed over the summer. Um, she and our other intern, Al, also did a presentation with the Center for Equity and Inclusion at the conclusion of their summer social justice internship um, program. And then she has just applied to graduate school. So she's thinking of doing an MFA or a PhD in literature um, up at UW. Um, so not these same skills, not letterpress, you know, but certainly thinking about literary arts. <clears throat> um, Al's story was pretty different. So he, I'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> um, he's a criminal justice major. Um, the Wright 253 internship was not necessarily his first choice, and he didn't have a huge investment in learning letterpress, but what he did have a huge investment in was working with incarcerated youth, and so this turned out to be, um, I think, a really, really good placement for him. He designed this poster here, um, We the People Demand Equity, Justice, and Peace, and those are his kids. He brought them to the shop. Um, and he had communicated to us, you know, something that he really wanted to take from this was less about poetry or artistic writing and more about grant writing. And so what we had him do over the course of the summer was to actually write a, an application for a grant to support a nonprofit that he had already founded called Cars for Giving, um, and he was successful. So he got that grant. It's um, you know, not a huge grant, but it's something that he can use to grow his nonprofit. And then he ended up, I think, networking with Omari and others at Pierce County and is interested in doing um, work as a probation officer. Again, he didn't necessarily think of that as the next step career-wise, as the application of his degree. Um, but I think learning about Raymond Hall, um, working with some of the youth or learning about youth there, um, and then making that connection with Omari and also the folks at Pierce County Courts. <clears throat> We did go out on a vote, <laughs> so 
So <laughs> this happened, Celia wasn't able to make it. Uh, but the Tacoma Boat Builders are like one of the bigger games in town for doing diversion and probation um, programs. So Mike had a connection and we went out and rode the boat, but then also talked to their ED about the structure and kind of how they collaborate and troubleshoot. Um, Al was actually really afraid of water, so this is like a big oh. deal <laughs> that he's that he's out there with us. And it was um, a sunny day and a fun day. <clears throat> okay, so I mentioned that we got to do a pilot of the probation program. Um, I was less a part of this work. This kind of happened at the end of summer, so after the interns had concluded their work with us, but Mike got to work with um, one youth and I think also had a positive experience. Yeah, and before I get into that, I just want to say, thinking about Al and Celia, like we've done internship programs with you know, the University of Puget Sound and kids from SOTA and different other, other ed, uh, academic and educational organizations. And um, we always, like when we, when we talk to potential interns, we say like this is not the kind of internship where you show up in an office and there's a stack of envelopes and you need to stuff these envelopes and then put stamps on them and mail them out. This is really much more of a, a sort of reciprocal relationship where we try to support the interests of the interns in, in ways that like having a nonprofit at your back can you know help you learn new things. Um, so Al's thing was really, really exciting for me because Cars Forgiving has nothing to do with literary arts, it has nothing to do with probation, uh, youth in the court system, it has nothing to do with letterpress printing. But you know, co-writing a grant with him and showing him how that's done is gonna help him, you know, with that nonprofit. And I think that's a direct outcome from this particular internship that Having an opportunity to work with a nonprofit organization like ours, which is really small and really scrappy and has to write a ton of grants just to keep you know, the ink flowing, uh, can be really helpful for students who are in similar situations. So um, the pilot probation program that we did do in uh, September, October, a young man um, involved in the court system here in, in Pierce County is a juvenile. Um, he was required to do, I wanna say, 24 hours of probation service with, there was a stipend at the end of it, so there's some incentive for him to come and do the program. He had no idea what letterpress was when he showed up the first day. Um, wasn't particularly interested in printmaking at all, but really loved sorting things. So we would just spend an, two hours at a time like cleaning the shop up, and he would, I always let the teenagers pick the music because they don't like what I listen to, usually. Um, so, you know, we would talk about music, we talk about life, we talk about whatever is going on. The last session we had, the second to last session we had, we printed the shop rules. And it was this idea that we had where we wanted to put, we had, we had it written it on a whiteboard, but I was like, we should make a print that has our shop rules. And so he and I co-set this and printed it and, you know, picked all the colors. We printed probably 15 of them, and I think you know, he said he was gonna hang one on his bedroom wall, so he took one with him, which was pretty cool. But, um, you know, it's towards the end of that session, he got really interested in kind of what printmaking was and wanted to actually do it. It, was no, it, was, it wasn't enough to just put type away anymore. He wanted to see how it all kind of worked, which was really fun. And also towards the end, he started to kind of open up a little bit more to me about what was going on in his life in ways that he hadn't in the first, you know, two or three sessions, so. Um, yeah, that was sort of how it went. I haven't seen him since, unfortunately. I've been texting him and trying to get in touch and see if he can, I want him to come back into the shop. You know, we want to create a space where you might come to us for one reason, you do an internship or you do a program, but you know, keep coming back, keep hanging out. It's a cool space to be in. Oh, they, and as a result of his, uh, his probation work with us, the judge dropped his charges and that was really exciting. I went to court and spoke on his behalf and everything, so. Um, sometimes the showing up at court can matter, right? Um, and it's just when we're working with youth, I think we see them at their best, and I think we're asking them to like do, you know, fun stuff, skills, show their talents, and um, yeah, it, it did work out well in this case. Um, okay, so takeaways and possible next steps. I think we're still in conversation. <laughs> Um, we'd like to be able to continue the internship in some way. Mike mentioned that Wright 253 regularly has interns with University of Puget Sound, and I always feel like, why them? <laughs> you know, why not us? You're across the street. Um, our students should be 
you know, doing this work with you. Um, so we're exploring some options for credit or paid. Um, one exciting thing is that um, Write 253 has a really big slam poetry event that was kind of on hiatus for the past few years and is coming back and it's coming back to UW Tacoma campus. So um, this spring in William Phillip Hall, we will hopefully have hundreds and hundreds of high schoolers um, present and sharing their poetry, but also you know taking a look around our campus. Um, I think Mike has plans, you know, depending on capacity, <laughs> to follow up with Pierce County Courts, the probation programs, um, and then also to engage with some other community organizations who do this work, um, YSAN, Youth Serving Agencies Network, and also Imagine Justice Project. Thank you so much. Thank you.